All right, Fantasy Flight Games has given us this great opportunity to present this wonderful piece of art by Felipe Martini, the artist of cards like Rad Penny, which we have done before on Burn the Stockpile. And I am Jupiter from Manlius, New York, a.k.a. the Fifth Planet Keyforge, and I have with me my Canadian co-host. Hey, it's Dominic uh, Hirov, and uh, I'm from uh, the Keyforge team, the A-team. So the first thing that... Uh, is wow this this card art is beautiful and yes we do have a card neither jupiter nor myself have actually looked at the the card yet and uh so we're gonna give it to you very raw we're gonna paint a story of what we think the card may be and uh you know uh tell us in the comments like uh while we're talking about this like what do you think of the card potentially was gonna be before we get to the end and actually reveal the card for the first time and see how far off uh we are and uh the first thing i want to talk about here is it's just this card like i honestly i was talking to jupiter this card is stunning like this card is a, a beautiful uh piece of work and one of the things that i think makes it so beautiful right away is the color work here is astonishing it is beautiful and i i think it's because of the colors that were chosen and how bright and whimsical it feels about it it feels very much uh keyforge and it feels like the unfathomable are here and they're gonna have a strong uh staying uh, power for sure yeah, I, I'm I'm really impressed with the color work here as well because of the fact that he used the whole spectrum. Like he has the warm to cool colors, and like it makes sense for Unfathomable to have that. Um, but it's like also like if you look at the bubbles and stuff like that, you just picture that these dinosaurs are really ticked off, right? And so like there's the red there to kind of go with the anger, and it kind of pushes the anger. And then like the cool like you know I'm not stressing out kind of attitude that's like in the blues and stuff that the, this uh, Aquian is uh, basically uh, you know carrying. So yeah the color work is absolutely fantastic i love it so um another thing that the uh, thing that sticks out to me here is the composition um the composition is really well balanced it's very busy but it's very like well balanced with the amount of stuff that's going on here and i like the way that the perspective is with the uh the bubbles being kind of recessed and pushed around you have this like backdrop of like a saurian what i would expect to be like a saurian uh you know up uh keep or whatnot and then like you have mm. him, you know you have him like in the pool and the pool and the water is like whooshing around him almost like a whirlpool so it's giving that tidal effect um so like lots of cool composition decisions here that just make for a very uh moving and engaging piece right uh to go with the color so like this has got to be like one of my favorite arts from the new set even though it's like the only one i've really looked at hard but uh this is just fantastic so I'll let you uh, talk a bit about that. A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I totally agree with uh, Jupiter here is that the composition is uh, great. I think that it's uh, an action scene as you see the the waves uh, coming up a bit, like he just has popped in uh, to this uh, area. And I uh, one of the, the, the big things uh, for me is that... Uh, it, we want to talk about the, the details that we uh, like, and so we're going to cover some of uh, that stuff. And uh, the, the the big thing that pops out to me and like it makes me laugh as I look at this is the face that we see on this Aquian is amazing. I absolutely love uh, the face. I imagine this uh, face as if we saw, and some people may not get this, but it it reminds me of an artist, a musician uh, that uh, I've listened to some of their music uh, before, and uh, it, it looks like an Aquian version of a dead mouse uh, to me. Uh, so this is uh, electronic uh, musician that has uh, put out some some songs here and there, but uh, the eyes, and I almost look at. Um, uh, the fin that you see uh, behind uh, the, the face uh, here. It looks like it's almost like a mask to me. And I'm wondering if this is uh, the Ocarina's actual face or if this is just like it's a uh, war gear that it's wearing potentially so that when it's not in water, it can still uh, breathe and whatnot. And I, I could almost picture underneath of uh, this helmet, of which is what I'm going to call it, it's like, you know, not as tough of a face because this uh, face with the razor teeth looks like it's ready to uh, chomp down and uh, be vicious 
Yeah, I, I I can see the dead mask comparison, but to me, like my musical genre pushes me towards like a Slipknot mask, <laughs> like uh, and like uh, you know, it's just like made to be terrifying and stuff. And like you said, underneath, maybe he's not so terrifying looking. But uh, the idea of like you know, perception is part of the war. And and I mean, he's going in against dinos, right? Dinos are pretty are pretty scary in their own right. So like uh, maybe they just wanted to show bigger teeth. I don't know. Maybe it was like a, a strategical plan. But uh, part of the composition around the face too that really pops the face like oh, really well is the idea of this triangle right everything in the in the picture back to the composition elements here is circular right there's lots and lots of circles and like things that are swishing in a circular pattern but when you look at this aquian he has a bunch of triangles to counter off the circles and uh, i think that this triangular look um suits well to the motion of him coming up out of the water um like right and so like it gives you that extra movement and um i think it's just really clever because it's an upward arrow right like so it's like pushing you up i don't know if you you kind of caught on to that but I, I i dig the idea of how this composition is and like the extra fins and stuff like that it speaks infiltrator like 100 percent infiltrator to me right like uh and uh, i really like the orange highlights on the blue here too because it's like a really it's an analogous composition that is based basically taking a blue and pushing an opposite warm color into it to give you that much more depth and energy. So I'm pretty excited. A hundred percent. And uh, I know I actually didn't really notice that until you mentioned it, uh, how the triangulation and like the upwards arrow, like I now I can't see unsee it. it it's unfathomable trying to look away and not uh, be able to see that for sure. And uh, yeah, I just love uh, it's all about the little details as well. Like just the, the water that is uh, just coming off of uh, this Aquian as he's uh, coming up. And uh, I just it's so terrifying looking like he's ready to wage war against these Sorians. And I know that you want to talk about uh, these uh, these colorful and very interesting uh, bubbles. So I'll, I'll give it back to you to go on uh, for that. Yeah, these bubbles, I think the artist did a crazy awesome job of making them feel like translucent, right? Like where it's like, you know that these big dinosaurs which are hang like going to be heavy right they're not going to be light and they're going to be very gravity prone um and yet they're still in the air somehow with these like got to be helium filled bubbles or something right right how are they controlling these dinosaurs and stuff and when you look at the dinosaurs they're like pretty angry still right but like maybe like over a course of time or whatnot maybe the helium inside will make them happier and maybe easier to deal with and more docile i don't know like exactly what this bubble gun is doing but um whatever it's doing it's very interesting because a it's taking a very heavy mass off of the ground and basically making it float and b like there has to be some kind of gas inside the bubble and it has to be a pretty thick fill to keep these dinosaurs in it especially with claws like you see the one has his hands like against the bubble with you know the claws and stuff and this bubble is not popping so this is like some super film stuff right here so i want to know what kind of technology that this is uh is bringing to the table i want to know the story behind it a hundred percent and uh, that, that leads me straight into uh this uh, uh gun that this aquarium's carrying i have dubbed it the bfg being a, a doom fan myself like it doesn't have to be some crazy big uh, gun but it is pretty big to be honest and uh the fact that it's capable of uh, doing uh this i love that it correlates really well with a uh, key forge as well like not everything has to be high explosions no we're gonna put you in bubbles and these uh, saurians that normally should be able to easily break out it can't uh, for whatever reason i actually would say that uh, these bubbles is probably um powered by like dark amber because you got the the purple colors and i'm wondering if like the potential maybe that's a conductor in uh, the back filled with uh raw or dark amber and that's what's uh, powering it uh so that he's capable of doing this uh, damage and the other question i have is that is this a, a weapon that they the unfathomable uh use against um creatures like land loving uh, creatures or can this weapon also work when it's in the water and i wonder does it function the same or does it act uh, differently so it's a multi-function uh, weapon because it's a it's a very intriguing uh, weapon and guaranteed the unfathomable are bringing in something new that none of the other houses have ever seen and that's why the historians are caught so surprised like you can look at their expressions and they're so angry and upset they're like how did this happen to me we're in the bubble how embarrassing like could you imagine your other saurian friends see you in this bubble they'd probably be laughing at you 
Yeah, and the, the interesting thing here too, right, right, is that when I look at this, I think of the plasma cannon from the Star Alliance. And uh, the intro to Dark Tidings for us is basically Sensor uh, Chief Garcia on the uh, cover of the box and the Zaquian basically finding her, like whether, you know, whether she was trying to steal an artifact or found an artifact that they didn't want her to take or whatever this. So there's this idea that in the Star Alliance that, like, the Aquian's first contact with anybody was the Star Alliance. So how much technology did they get off the Star Alliance? And then we see like Subject Curvy, like if you look at his artwork, he's basically transforming into something that looks a lot like an Aquian. So, and um, and he doesn't seem to be bothered by it because Kirby is Mr. Goodfellow, but like, um, the idea is that like i kind of wonder like maybe this is like a hybrid of what they had for technology and using some of star alliances to get this like super amber value out of it and like what kind of like alliance is really happening because star alliance's job is to make peace with everybody right and basically to colonize and like make a make a collective so like who's to say that maybe the initial going with the aquarium was pretty rough but then they they found some kind of truce and then they started building these things. And maybe the Saurian are too aggressive for the Star Alliance. So now the Aquian have, have sided with them. Who knows? Like the stories can start to build from here, right? A hundred percent. And I, I think that's a painting, uh, a, a really good uh, picture here that we have of this art piece. And that's, that's something that we love to cover in all our videos is what does this art piece mean to us? And like, how do we see the, the story? So I, uh, one of the, the things that we look at here is that we see this pull and it's very much as if this Aquian has just shown up and I could see it. Like if I was watching uh, the little mermaid though, a little bit of a different uh, type of Aquian of like uh, you have this Aquian uh, creature spinning up and coming into the Saurian. I would I would say potential uh, their capital. It could be anywhere. Hard to say from the the, the background, but he's ready here. So Jupiter is saying that uh, potentially. I, I like uh, the, the little bit where you're saying that. Do they team up with uh, the Star Alliance? And that's hard to say because if you look at the, the cover art and, and uh, you'll see that initially they don't look like they were too friendly but it's possible that uh they wanted to uh team up with uh the star alliance and the Saurian are, are a little bit uh more aggro and a little bit uh, rougher around the edges or it's also possible i think with the unfathomable uh coming in that uh the, the way I see it is that they've now been disturbed by the Star Alliance and uh, they are upset and they're like, you know what, uh, you guys are too close to our, our home. And I could see that um, potentially it could be an unfathomable kingdom that maybe is linked uh, underneath uh, this simple pool and uh, no one knew about it into uh, Censor Chief Garcia uh, disrupted them for the, the first time. Well, we know the Saurian have been in, in the Crucible for a really long time, right? And so the Unfathomable probably have been there just as long. So maybe that there was already an uneasy alliance, like not alliance, but an uneasiness between the two factions being older factions, right? Like um, I'm going to assume, I'm going to making a, a strong assumption that the Unfathomable are an, a more ancient group like the Saurian, right? And so like for the longest time, Saurians were stayed away and like, you know, they, they were out of the mix and kind of isolated to themselves and stuff. So maybe the Unfathomable were in the same predicament where they're isolated to themselves but now that people have brought attention to them again like people are worried about them and stuff and uh you know the tide is high so let's go let's ride <laughs> A hundred percent. And uh, I, I think that's uh, everything I want to cover about like uh, what I think uh, this card covers for story. Was there anything else that uh, you, you've, you've seen uh, the picture that you think uh, adds more flavor to it? Or do you want to jump on down to our next uh, little bit? I think uh, I'm pretty happy with everything, like the pool of water being like mentioned and like how it's like obviously high tide, the water's coming up and he's shooting up out of it, doing his, his business. Like I said, I think he's an infiltrator, but that kind of ties into what we're going into, right? Where we're going to basically talk about what the projection of what this card that we have might be, right? I'm excited to learn, um, but... Uh, it's curious also to see how the art is cut. That's something else that we always take a p uh, idea with. It's like we want to see how much of the art actually makes the card, right? Because there's so much cool art on the borders here. I would hate to see it cut too much, but there's a chance that, that we're, we don't see some of this stuff. So um, I'm ready to play this game if you're ready to play this game. So th this is basically the what type of card is it game. And uh, what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to name all four of the major cards it could be and then what the pay, the possibility is and then we're going to rank each other on a scale of one to ten what we think it could be until we have a final guess of what we what we're going to go with so and then we'll see how wrong we are but we're going to have fun painting this picture i think dominic 
a hundred percent Jupiter. I think this is going to be a, a lot of fun. And I encourage uh, the viewers that like, uh, you can pause like uh, halfway through while we're uh, talking about this, R write a comment uh, on uh, the video. Like when we say, oh, this is what we think the action is. Let us know what you think the action might be, what the upgrade might be, what the creature might be, what an artifact uh, might be for this uh, piece of art. Like this is part of uh, the fun and just enjoying it on a, a more casual level, talking about like these art pieces is something that was never really done until we started uh, the channel. So just a little bit of fun. So I think the first one and naming it in those orders is uh, let, let's talk about uh, an action card. So I'll, I'll let you start, or unless you're not uh, ready for it, and then I can start. Uh, I'm pretty good uh, for the action. I'm 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 always ready, um, except for when I'm not. And uh, so for my action card, uh, I'm gonna go with this is a. I don't know what the name of the card would be. That's one thing I don't have. But uh, I'm guessing that it would be like something like uh, Stasis, right? Like I'm going to call it Stasis because I'm a, I am love the old magic game. Uh, and uh, Stasis is a, a card I used to love. And uh, Stasis, the idea here is that um, creatures would be put into a basically like a vorpal time loop. So like you, it would remove a creature from the game for a set amount of time. Um, so... Uh, maybe auspicious maybe a little bit too powerful in the thought of what it is but I'm, I'm saying like it's kind of like a like a pseudo archive where it's like this creature is in play but he's not able to do absolutely anything for i'm gonna go with two turns like it or and, it, and it's obviously like a multiple effect so i think this is like all your enemy creatures in the game make or maybe no i'm gonna go with all non unfathomable creatures in the game are put into stasis for a turn i'll go with that that is very interesting because you're actually talking about a uh, card effect and I was going to go with a similar idea. So for those that don't know, Fantasy Flight Games has a uh, card mechanic that they've had in uh, the different games from uh, Game of Thrones. They've had it in uh, Star Wars uh, Destiny. They've had it in uh, Warhammer Conquest. Uh, they had it in uh, uh, quite a few of the living card games that they have designed. And in Game of Thrones, it was called uh, Shadow. Uh, and in uh, Warhammer, I, I wish I could remember what it was called, but it was basically called different uh, names. And uh, similar to what uh, Jupiter was talking about was it was an out of uh, play aspect. And what you did um, was that, uh, uh, for instance, in uh, Game of Thrones, the living card game, there was a, uh, a character that I absolutely love that's called uh, Cold Hands. And when he enters uh, play, you uh, get to choose uh, different uh, characters and you would uh, flip them down. So I see this action similar to what Jupiter uh, uh, sees, and I think it's uh, even more specific. I think it's uh, uh, it would be uh, you choose a, a house, and all creatures of that house go into uh, you, you basically flip uh, that uh, card uh, over. So you would flip these uh, cards uh, over. And uh, I think it would be something like maybe you gain two or three chains and that these cards stay flipped over uh, for a turn. And I would actually say that it works on uh, just the house that you choose. Uh, that way, if you have that house, you can choose one of your own houses, or if your opponent does, you can choose their house, or it could affect uh, both of you. And the reason why I think this would be a cool mechanic is that it would basically uh, move uh, the characters uh, fr from not being in uh, play that turn, but it also means it would potentially protect your characters if you were to use it yourself. Like, say you thought your opponent was about to uh, use a board to wipe, then you could use this mechanic where they're temporary out of play, and then they flip out. As far as a, a name, uh, I would call it something silly like uh, Bubble Bubble Double Trouble. Uh, I, I don't have anything uh, too cool for this one. But yeah, I, I'd be on a similar page uh, for you for that one. What if they flipped over and for each creature in the house, that was the duration of how many turns they were flipped over? Ooh, that's kind of interesting. I, I like that. Yeah, be that'd be fun. Because then it would be a little bit more like, because like it'd be, I think it'd be way too strong if you were able to just be like, I'm going to take them out of turn. I'm going to phase them out for one turn and then, you know, cast gateway to disc and then come back. Right? Like it's, it's too easy to like quick to do but like if now the variable becomes how many of that house on both sides of the board are on the board now you have like basically like a small army that gets phased out of existence for a bit and then all of a sudden it's going to come back and 
X amount of turns, right? Like, it would be that'd be interesting. Like, that'd be really cool. But that's theory crafting fan fiction, so don't uh, don't don't, <laughs> quote, don't quote us on all this. This seems a little bit too powerful, maybe. But um, the idea is really neat. I think that would be a super fun mechanic. But um, with that said, um, I guess we'll move to the second uh, the second in our group. Uh, he said action was first. It wasn't first on my list, but we're we're gonna think. So I'm gonna put him under the guns and make him go first, and we'll go with the upgrade. Let's do the upgrade. Uh, the upgrade was was waiting for. So I hundred uh, percent can see this as an upgrade and it clearly the upgrade is yet you're getting this crazy uh weapon so i i think that this would be uh i'm dubbing it again the bfg just because i love that name uh but i i think that the upgrade would be this a bubble weapon and it basically would uh say um uh so it's an upgrade uh and the weapon would uh, give you an uh, effect um what would the effect be? I, I think this one would be correlated to uh, high uh, high tide. And for those that don't know, um, the tide mechanic is a new thing that is coming in uh, this uh, set. And I think this would 100% be uh, a, a tide uh, related. And so what I think it would uh, say is that um, it would give you uh, ability that it would be a fight uh, ability. And it's a uh, before uh, fight uh, the creatures uh, to the um, the side of the creature that you're fighting uh, uh, would what would it do? Yeah, you did get me a bit here. I, I think that it would do a mechanic that either that it would reduce their power level down to like uh, one or something silly like that, or again it would be, play in a, a fact that uh, it would uh, remove uh, potentially all their. Oh, I think it would blank like their capabilities and they would just have their power level so if they had um any type of unique like elusive skirmish or anything like that it would remove uh, their normal capabilities like their normal uh stuff or alternatively i know i'm going long-winded for this one is that i think uh it would say actually i'm gonna go with this i think it says fight uh when you uh, before fight um the character, the creature that you're fighting, does no damage uh, back uh, to you. So it makes it uh, so that uh, the creature, because you're putting them in this uh, bubble, they don't have the capacity, almost like kind of like a skirmish uh, or something like that. Hmm. I'm not sure. You, you got me a bit on that. <laughs> you just like changed your mind like 30 times. But your bubble fun, <laughs> your bubble fun gun for all the kids that are listening. That's what BFG stands for. The bubble fun gun is uh, interesting, and um, to me, I think it's just going to be called like bubble cannon or something. Because I, I agree with you. I think it's all about like in, if this is an upgrade, it's definitely a the gun, right? Like the the, the weapon that's being used here. And I'm going to go with the idea that it's kind of like a plasma nozzle, like a plasma gun. So I think it will have a before the fight effect. And I think the before the fight effect is going to be that um, for every creature that is um, next to and the one that you're targeting, they're all going to just get be stunned for a turn. So they're going to be stunned. And then, like, uh, basically, you would continue the fight, fight, fight out, and then, but you have three stunned creatures now. So it's kind of like a tremor in a gun, right? Like, um, so that's, that's where I think I'm going to go with it. I think that's a, a viable a viable weapon and fair weapon for, for unfathomable. I, I think that makes a, a lot of sense when you're saying that uh, it would uh, stun them. I, I do like that one quite a bit. Instead of me just uh, blabbering on, trying to think on the spot for what uh, the upgrade, which I, I clearly had a good mark on. <laughs> so uh, the next one that we'll look at here is uh, what if this art piece is a creature is what I want to cover next. And I, I think that this one has a lot of potential of it being a uh, creature and uh, I, I think that of course this would obviously be an unfathomable creature i don't think it's going to be in a, a different house than that and uh for this uh, creature i think it, the focus is on its uh, capabilities uh here <clears throat> and i i still think that it's going to be related to uh the tide and i think that uh, the tide uh, mechanic is uh Simply uh, to piggyback a bit off of what Jupiter said, I, I think that uh, its ability uh, would be that when it fights, 
uh, it stuns uh, the creature that it's uh, uh, fighting. Uh, and that would be the mechanic. I would see it as potentially like a uh, a three to uh, four power uh, creature. And um, when it's, the tide is high, that's when it's uh, capable of uh, stunning a creature. And it may have one other mechanic on top of that. Uh, th that's what I would, potentially, I think, potentially. That's that's where I'm going uh, with it. Or, no, that's where I'm going to go. That's, uh, I'm, I'm stopping there. <laughs> All right, so for me, I think it, I agree with you that the creature would be a three power creature. I think uh, I think that makes sense. I think it's gonna be some kind of infiltrator. Like so, I'm giving it a skirmish or elusive quality to it, um, which I think comes standard, right? Um, so I'm gonna go with um, it being I'm gonna go with it being skirmish three power creature that basically because as an infiltrator, an aquian infiltrator, and then when the tide is high, he also gains elusive. Um, I think that oh, okay. would I, I think that would be a cool theme them, thematic um, element, right? Like where it's like uh, when the tide goes high, now he gains elusive as well because like he can basically dip, right? Like he can go down and dip out. But for the most part, he's like a skilled war war type um, that can come up and basically fight and not take damage because you know, obviously he's a bit crafty and uh, <laughs> maybe because of that gun and the bubbles. But um, either way, he's hard basically hard to kill. Um, like when he comes up and he's actually fighting you, but then when the tide gets high, he's even harder to kill because now he can kind of use the water to his advantage. That's my that's my call on the on the creature line. All right, and and so for the artifact, I'm finally gonna nail down something. And for the artifact, I think this would be a uh, fun one. Uh, again, I'm focusing on the tides for a lot of uh, these ones, and I I think uh, for if the if the tide, if there's no high or low, t if if there's no low or high tides here, I think if it's just normal, uh, it potentially just uh, stuns uh, a single uh, creature. But if the tide is high, I think uh, what would happen for this artifact is that you choose uh, uh, a house, and um, that house is unable to fight. Uh, into the start of your uh, next uh, turn. So you would choose an enemy house, and that house could still reap, it could still do actions, but it's not capable of uh, fighting uh, your creature. So it's just a, a cool, interesting mechanic that gets enhanced and is slightly different uh, when the, the tide is high. Hmm. I'm going to go with a different level on this. I'm going to go with the idea that the artifact would be the mask. Um, and this is gonna, oh okay. This is going to be the mask of the Aquian, and um, what it would do is it would give your creature that it is put on. Um, let's go with like plus two armor, just for whatever. Um, I don't know if that's a wise one, but plus two armor um, for the mask of Aquian. But when the tide is high, you also gain three power. Because basically you would be able to be back in the water and it, it's more your natural element. So therefore you wouldn't need the mask to breathe. That's what I'm thinking. Um, something along that lines. But that's kind of a fetch. I don't know if I, I'm all in on this thought. But that's what it came to mind when I thought about it. I just tried to hit a different angle with the mask. Hey. No worries, like, and that's the thing here. Like, uh, we're we're clearly stuttering over some of uh, the, the stuff, but we're having uh, fun with it. Like I said, let us know in the comments what you think uh, an action upgrade creature or an artifact for this art piece will be, and uh, we'll see here in a, a little bit what the the actual card is, and to see if uh, if you you were right or if we were right. I, I guarantee you, uh, I think my chances of being right. Uh, are slim to none because I was all over the map. Uh, but you might have uh, come up with something or Jupiter may have came up uh, with a, a good idea. So I, I think this is a good time. Uh, we can uh, look at uh, the cards uh, here in a minute and uh, pull it up uh, unless you want to cover anything uh, in between. What's your prediction? Which of the four do you think it is? Without, like, all things aside, like our guesses aside, do you think this is a creature, artifact, upgrade, or an action, in your opinion? I 100% believe it's a creature and it has the tide mechanic. I think that uh, the creature being such a big focus in uh, this art piece, I think that I'm completely off of its actual mechanic, uh, but I do believe that uh, it's a creature is my top pick. 
Is this a named creature? Ooh, uh, I would say yes, because he's unique looking. I have not seen any Aquians look like uh, him. Okay, so I have you down as a unique creature. So they basically it would be a, a, a personality creature for the Aquians. Um, I am going to go with the thought that this is... Whew, I'm going to go, just to be contrarian, I'm going to go with the idea that it is an upgrade. Um, okay. I, th I think that the upgrade and the idea of the gun is too much for me to pass, and I do believe it will be tied into a... I do, I do not believe it will be tied into a tied mechanic, actually. So, um, I think it will just be an upgrade, and it will have some kind of coldness to it. I think everything should be tied into tied mechanic when it's Aquian, but um, I'm going to go with... Actually, no, I think it will be tied to the... To the um, it will be tied. I'm going to go with it will be tied. That'll be my, my final answer because it will have a tied mechanic. Because I think that when like when you were talking about the above water versus underwater thing, I think that um, that's the tied mechanic difference. Like whatever happens between the two. So um, I'm going to go with that thought. That's my thing. So we're going to take a break right now. We're actually take a cut. Um, we'll play you a little bit of uh, a, a, some kind of intro here um, to a little. Uh, break as we uh pull up the card and go goo goo gaga about it and then we'll come back and we'll goo goo gaga for you so uh with that said uh this is jupiter fifth planet keyforge um and dominic and we will be right back super excited i'm sure <laughs> so <laughs> let's take a break what does it say what, what what's its power Five power, yes. What what kind of creature is it? Aquan. Aquan, yeah. All right, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're in, and that was Harlan giving you the break on the card, and the card's name is Bubbles, and it is a creature. We weren't wrong. Um, a little bit bigger than we had thought, right, Dominic? And um, a very cool ability, not tide based. So um, I don't. Th I, I think we were close, but not. We didn't hit it, obviously, but. We did say that you did say that it would be a creature with a name, right? So, and I agreed with that. So, I, but I went the opposite way of it. But so, what do you think, man? Like, pretty silly. I, it, I I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, there's multiple layers of why this makes me excited. First of all, it's a creature that's unique, and it's, it, it's, it has a fun name, Bubbles. And I love that they have uh, Brad's uh, character from the Logos uh, creature, Quixel the Adventure. Why do they call him? Ugh, never mind. Like, uh, that uh, flavor text is awesome by itself. The fact that it's five uh, power, that's a big uh, creature. And its play effect, why did we not think about this? Why did we not think about putting it on top of its owner stack? Like, that just makes so much sense. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate uh, that I, we were both wrong because we thought uh, it would be a tied, uh, a tied mechanic would uh, play effect. But uh, I love it. I love this. It's, it's awesome. It's super cool. And it's a, a common, which means that we're going to see this a lot. So that's perfect. Yeah, I'm excited too that the fact that there is actually 353 plus cards in this set. <laughs> like when you look at the number at the bottom, that's crazy. Oh yes, um, that's, that's, that's true. A, that's a big set. And um, the cool thing I, I think here too is the idea that it's a tempo card, right? So we're seeing like this, it's like, a, it's another addition to my favorite style of play of where you're basically just messing with your opponent and slowing them down by putting things in their way. Um, and I think that's a play line that's been getting more popular now, but it's always been my favorite play line is playing this tempo based um, card game because before it was really about Amber Rush and it was about control, right? And tempo players kind of le got left in the middle, but like Inca, my deck Inca is all about tempo and basically disruption. And then now you're starting to see a push towards disruption and maybe Unfathomable takes, my, takes it as my favorite house because it looks like they are going to be all about it. And it, with cards and card art like this, I'm in. <laughs> It's a it's a really cool uh, mechanic, and it plays well with the other houses, which is super important because potentially now that this uh, creature has gone on top of its deck, not only do you know what uh, the creature is, uh, it could be a double edged sword. Uh, it might be useful for you. It might be useful for your opponent. But there's potentially cards that are going to say discard the the top card of an opponent's deck, or potentially name uh, the top uh, card. 
and now you could uh, benefit. Uh, there might be a combo mechanic, but even if that doesn't happen, the most important thing uh, to me, anything that returns a creature, and instead of it returning it to the hand, which I think is a little bit more powerful, the fact that this is returning it to the top of uh, the deck, you now know that what the creature is, is amazing because you got those annoying, and it's perfect. It's so perfect. The Saurian. Who are the more annoying uh, creatures that have so much amber on them? And now you just say, hey, I'm going to return you to the top of your deck. I did not destroy you. Uh, so if they had a mechanic that would uh, remove all the amber and make it go back to the common pool, you don't have to worry about that. It, turns, it just now can... Yeah. It turns, it, off, oh. it, it turns off their Ludo, right? Like, completely. And uh, yeah, like, this is great. Like, uh, I think that's pretty pretty crazy. Like... I'm. I like this card. I think this card's great, and it's common. So that means you're going to see a lot of bubbles. <laughs> and, and another thing uh, for me, uh, because I'm Canadian, the Canadian aspect for this is that uh, there's a a little TV show called uh, Trailer Park uh, Boys. I only bring this up because uh, one of the main characters. Uh, names is literally uh, Bubbles, and now uh, we have uh, Bubbles in uh, Keyforge, which is perfect. I absolutely love it. And what I'm intrigued by is, will this have an evil twin? And what would the evil twin be? Hmm. Hmm. It'd be, it'd be interesting, right? And uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, uh, I want to see it though. But I'm a fan, and like, we usually rank cards like on a scale of one to ten, whether the um, the card matches the art and i don't think that either one of us could even start to argue that this is in a smackdown 10 like this is easily the best like name to card art ratio i think i've ever seen in the game <laughs> i like how how can you argue against it in any shape or form it's like what's the name bubbles what do you see bubbles like what does why, it do why do they uh, call it, him it, it, never mind <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so good i uh, i'm so glad that uh they they sent us this beautiful piece of art and that the card is fantastic like the ah, uh, this, this is gonna be a fun one people i i think they did a great job of making this a comment because that that's um something that is really important in uh, key forge is that you want that house uh capabilities like what does this house do and you want to have fun cards and you want them at that common level so that more players especially at the casual level they're going to have so much joy be like you put so many upgrades on this big monster creature i'm just going to return them to the top of your deck fantastic and i think five is a great power level because it, like it helps deal with like the smaller like token creatures like the, the kirby's and things and not die and still keep a body on the board so you can maybe get two kills with this thing like against those kind of creatures if you needed to but he's also like big enough that like he can dent the bigger creatures like the saurians and the and the brobnars and of the world and stuff like that so like i at common i think five power is really good and to have an ability on top of it like I, I'm a fan. Like uh, I think this is a, this is going to be a very fun card, and I wouldn't mind having a couple of bubbles in my deck. I I think everyone's going to be looking forward to seeing uh, this uh, card for sure. And another thing, because we talked about how beautiful the, the art is and how much we love it, uh, one of the things that we like to talk about is when you see the the full art versus what is cropped in uh, the card. I think they did a fantastic uh, job. The only thing that I'm really seeing that is missing, and I don't think it's vital, is that the, the top of the building in the left-hand corner mm -hmm. is cut off because of the logo of Unfathomable, but that is not a vital item. Everything else is captured in the picture. It looks fantastic. It really pops. It really is a bubble. Yeah, this is 100%. Like, uh, you can't burst my bubble on this one. This is a this is a fun card, great time. So happy that that uh, Fantasy Flight Games was kind enough to give us this opportunity to basically do a a release here, and uh, they do have the Dark Tiding set coming out soon in March. So we will look forward to that. Um, and other than that, I, I don't really have anything else to say. I'm I'm just gonna sit here and look at this artwork and still be amazed by it. And uh, man, I can't wait. Like oh. this is gonna be a fun set. I, I can't wait. Uh, I, I've already, and I'm sure lots of people are doing this, I already went out and uh, I pre-ordered uh, uh, a display or two of uh, Dark Tidings supporting our, our local stores and uh, doing uh, the good thing. And uh, this has me extremely excited. Uh, and uh, for uh, players out there, we'll... 
that maybe you haven't uh, played Keyforge, uh, we'll have a link uh, to FFG's uh, Fantasy Flight Games uh, website, as well as the Dark Tidings uh, uh, article talking about uh, some of the new mechanics and some of the great stuff. And and uh, trust us, after you've seen uh, Bubbles, I think there's going to be a lot of fun stuff in this new set. Yeah, so that's all we got. That's all we got to say. And this is uh, Jupiter, and I say... We will catch you on the flip side. Ready, I ready. <laughs> Have a good one, guys.